Hi guys, I'm Jeff Morgan and I'm pretty excited to share with you something that I've found that's been very useful. It's uh, had a pretty great uh, return of investment on my time and giving me some uh, remote visibility of a system that I started several years ago. So there's a bit of a backstory before I get into the technical details of this unit. I want to give you the backstory because it's kind of a unique uh, setup that I have, a uh, use case for this that I think that you might be able to uh, use in some of your uh, different uh, designs. But anyway, it's the Persuaden 2 3268. And what this is, is basically an email server in a box with environmental monitoring. So this was probably originally most likely designed and set up for the IT industry. So you got like uh, server farms, uh, companies and businesses that have remote locations that have network closets and they want to be able to have a, a presence, a sense of what's going on at those, those sites. They want to be able to have a visibility of those sites from a remote location. So environmental monitoring, of course, you would have a, a number of different sensors you could hook up to this. Uh, primarily, this probably started out as a project um, just for like door contact closures, uh, cabinet doors, um, uh, you know, so they could tell if uh, people were accessing their equipment or gear or set alarms basically like a little alarm box and it would send out an email. So with that being said, about 15 years ago, the story goes that I was actually uh, working as a field service um, technician along with one other gentleman and we were responsible for a fleet of network gear. So uh, we were set up with an office in an industrial park and it was basically just uh, a workshop with some spare parts and company assets locked up in there and we weren't up in there every day of course because we were out taking care of other th things out in the field and as time would go on we'd have uh, a lot of uh, repaired equipment that would get shipped out to our home office cross country and it would come back and it wasn't always a notif notification to us that uh, the shipment was coming in wasn't always uh, provided so a lot of times there would be a uh, missed uh, package deliveries uh, from UPS, they put a little door door tag on the window of the door, and they basically you have to try to arrange a schedule. And we're running around. Sometimes you missed a shipment, it might go back, and then uh, we actually went to our neighbors, the neighboring businesses around the area, and that quickly burned them out. You know, sometimes they get a pretty large size boxes. You know, sometimes it's HP computer or whatever, and they were kind of concerned about the value of the packages or being just sitting in front of their. Uh, front office or whatever and they're trying to conduct their own business so that didn't really work so well and I knew that I had to come up with a better solution and at that time the uh, thing that crossed my mind was I needed some type of a parcel locker that I could put out front out in front of the business because this was just a industrial building in a business park for the most part so I went out and got a uh, job box a metal container knack box. Uh, you see them out on work sites where contractors put all their tools in it and they've got a metal lid and it locks with a padlock and has a, a combination to it so it would secure packages. So I went and got one of those, put it out in front of the business and uh, the, the four digit combination would be part of the uh, shipping label so they would be able to uh, use the same code. It was pretty much uh, lock the package in there. Nobody would come and take the packages. And that was great, it would secure our packages. But then the other part of the equation was, is how am I notified um, if I got something of expense in there? I really don't want it sitting in there overnight. Sometimes we'd be out in the field and we'd uh, end our duties for the day and just go back to our own homes and not have to actually check into the office. There was no need for that. It wasn't realistic anyway to be sitting in there staring at the wall all day when we're out doing uh, maintenance on network here out in the field. So I had to, scratch my head a little bit and at that time this is over 15 years ago I believe um, we're, the uh, technology at that point in time we didn't have a lot of the neat little items that we have like this guy right here I mean this is why I'm telling this story in the backstory because it kind of it brings a lot to um, how these things have uh, really improved the efficiency and, and the return of investment and it's made it a lot easier to be able to adapt something like this and so access uh, security cameras was just coming on the scene back then and I had a basic unit that basically was um, web enabled which was kind of like ooh, we got web enabled cameras now that are standalone for security and so basically what I did is I had it because I couldn't actually attach it to the outside of the building it was a little bit beyond the scope of what we had um, 
access to gaining control to be able to do that. And so actually we had a, a glass front door to this office space. And so I took the camera and I connected it to the internet in the shop there and it pointed towards the window. And this, this only worked for a period of time and I quickly could see the flaws in it, but it worked for a period of time. Basically the UPS driver would come put the package in the container, close the container, and then you put the little door tag sticker or whatever that he left the package or a situation like that. And I would see it on the video and then I would know that there was a package there in the box. And, or I could see maybe sometimes he'd park right in front of the, the window with his big, big truck and everything. So that kind of had some flaws. It wasn't hundred percent. And I said, I know I can do better. I really need some electronic detection monitoring of this physical box. So whenever the lid opens and closes, I'm going to get some type of notification. At that time, I couldn't really um, find anything. Uh, and, you know, I tried thinking about maybe some type of an email system, but the quickest and easiest solution that I had access to to be able to get it off the ground was uh, to go to Radio Shack. I mean, actually, I think I might have had this before the project started, but anyway, they had this box that they used to sell for uh, residential alarm systems. It was an auto dialer, and it was another small box, another little appliance that basically you would go in and program it with a voice message and you put in a phone number into it and you plug it into the old hard line, landline telephone jack in the wall and anytime there was an alarm contact that would trigger it, it would pick up the telephone line, dial the phone number and play the pre-recorded message and I just took a little bit of music and just threw it on there and had this pre-recorded message and I programmed it to call my uh, cell phone at the time and so the triggering um, from the metal container to that device, I wanted it to be wireless. I didn't want any wires coming out of the box going into the building and triggering this thing. Somebody could go up there and cut it or whatever. I want it to be a little bit cleaner than that. So my solution to that was I was thinking about some type of wireless trigger and it came pretty simple that I could go right off the shelf. I went over to the hardware store and bought myself a Genie garage door opener because I knew, number one, that it was very reliable. People use them every day. They're very secure. Not that I was really concerned about false triggering of this box or whatnot. So basically, um, the sh uh, parcel um, locker basically is what it is, as a parcel locker is how it was being used. <clears throat> so, and I knew that it had enough penetration to get through the metal box. If the box, you know, is a metal box and then the building, it would penetrate through that without a problem. I mean, you're in your car and it goes through your car and goes into your garage and your garage door opens every day. And very rarely do we have much trouble with that technology. So that's like, cool. So I took the Genie garage door fob and I put a magnetic contact and I put all this inside the metal container. So when the lid came open, it would send a signal to the receiver, which was inside of the building, which would trigger the auto dialer. And I'd get a phone call on my phone and I'd hear this um, message that I had and I knew I had a package. So then I made a priority to go over there and empty the box and collect all, the, all, our, all our packages and bring them into the facility. So that was great and that worked for a period of time. And as things happened with all of us, you know, job change came around and that job went away and then it started a new chapter in life. But the uh, parcel locker, I had purchased myself out of pocket, so that was my, my equipment. So I hauled that thing home and it became my own residential parcel locker. And, and as many of you know these days, I mean, parcel theft is just through the roof. And we're ordering nowadays more through Amazon and all these online services. We're getting through two or three, four packages you know, a week and sometimes three or four in, in a shot. And, you know, so I really found a great benefit of continuing on with this with this system, but as also as technology improved over over the years, uh, we ditched the the home telephone line, the landline, years ago, and just run around with the cell phones. So I knew that I had to come up with uh, another method of, um, of remote monitoring. And so fast forward to modern times, you know, I wanted to find something off the shelf that was pretty easy, and I'm a I have electronic and you know, technical background and like to geek around with little electronic projects and such. So I was kind of on the internet looking around trying to see if there was any, uh, you got your microcontrollers, you got your you do-it-yourself hobby type stuff, you got your Arduinos and your um, Raspberry Pi type of uh, uh, projects. And you could definitely do something if you want to take the time and you had the 
programming skills or could develop enough skills. But to, to really get something, I was looking for a module that was basically like an email server on a chip and it had some support software with it that I could integrate into one of these other types of microcontrollers and kept looking around. I wasn't really finding what I was looking for and it's going to take a little bit more programming um, skill to get that level of um, functionality and reliably have it work without, you know, a lot of putting a lot of energy and effort into it. And that's a few years back is when I stumbled into this, the HW group and they're actually out of uh, Czech Republic. Um, they've been building, they, they don't just build this one box only. I mean, this company has been around for quite a bit of time and they've proven themselves. Um, if you're in the industry, the IT industry or technology industry, you may have heard of these guys. You may even have some of their equipment. You may have your own thoughts about how you like, how you, um, your own thoughts on how it's worked for you and such. Um, I've had the original version of the Posweden 2, or the Posweden was the original version. This is the 2, but the original version that I got um, was basically has um, just to get into what this box actually is it's basically an email engine inside of here an email server you can completely configure it and it's got some inputs so it's got this one here the basic unit has four inputs so you can put dry contacts alarm contact um, you can put a host of other types of sensors they got a lot of different sensors that go into some of the other ports so if you want to uh, monitor temperature you want to monitor like a um, leak detection if you have some type of you know that you don't want if um, something leaks or you know for example like if you're on uh, you have cold storage and stuff starts to melt or if you have water tanks and you need to have a leak detector on the floor in case something floods flood detector basically uh, they have uh, well, temperature sensors uh, there's a whole list. I mean, inside of his catalog, because I, I don't actually use it for those things, but you just to kind of give you an idea, here we go. We got the power detection. They got a PR, which is a motion sensor, the smoke detector, uh, temperature sensor, like I mentioned a few times already. I'm sorry about that. But anyway, the, they got outdoor contact, which you can put on any door or any enclosure, and that's kind of where I focused on it with. And then the vibration detection, uh, humidity, uh, there's just a, a whole um, slew of different detectors that they have available. So the point is, is that it's far, you can, the applications for this kind of equipment is far more than what I'm using it for, but this is a kind of a off the side kind of unique use for it. Um, maybe not so unique, unique, but it's um, being used in a residential application now, currently in my, in my home office. And since um, the parcel locker, I've used it for, uh, for transmitting messages uh, notifications basically whenever my parcel locker opens and closes and I've got four inputs um, on this I'm actually using the other three I just decided to go ahead and get wireless basically uh, GE wireless uh, alarm contacts that is <clears throat> you would install into your home for any uh, basic alarm system so I got my front door my back sliding glass door and my garage door and plus my parcel locker. So those are my four inputs that I'm currently using through this device. And anytime they open or close, it generates an email and goes out at ethernet into my uh, internet at my router in my office and sends me an email message. And I will tell you that having that availability, uh, the house part of it, it was as important. I just did that because it was, um, available I had the room to do it and it was kind of easy to add that on my biggest um, value add with this technology in this box is that now I have a complete understanding anytime my uh, parcel locker is open and closed so anytime I receive a package I know that it's in that box and it, uh, it actually tells me when it's open it actually tells me when it's closed it automatically locks itself um, that's a whole nother story and details but with that parcel locker, now I know that my packages aren't sitting on my front porch. So I'm really excited about this. What it led up to, you might have heard me say earlier that I had an earlier version, which was just the Posweden. This is the Posweden 2. Recently, um, the email service that I use through my uh, local Comcast internet service here on the West Coast in, in uh, Seattle, they upgraded the, their security features on it and the older box didn't support that so much but now this box here actually supports secure uh, TLS mode and if you're into knowing these configurations they approved the technology and the box is working 
perfectly fine. I've tested this box. I just recently received it. So today's video was sponsored by True Path Technologies. I'd like to send a big shout out to them and a big thank you for sponsoring the, the uh, Persuaden 2 device as was shown earlier here. Uh, the HW Group line of uh, equipment is carried by them. They're the sole distributors of that equipment in the U.S. And that's not all that they distribute. They also carry uh, other brands. So if you are in the market, if you're in the need, you're looking for some type of a network monitoring solution, please reach out to True Path Technologies. These guys are the, the leaders and the experts, the subject matter experts on this. They've been uh, at it for a number of years and they have a lot of experience that they can be able to share and they can uh, consult with you to get you set up and uh, if you're uh, looking for someone to help support you on the software and the hardware side of a solution that can uh, ease off some of the stress and the overload on your current IT department or your technology department, whatever the case may be, just give them a call, get in touch with them, start the discussion, start a conversation and see what they can do for you. These guys are excellent, they're a great bunch of guys. Uh, we really appreciate their support on this little project here and that was fun just to be able to uh, share a little bit about this device. Maybe some of you haven't even uh, seen these devices before and you're kind of trying to do your own little personal project like I did. Maybe this can be a benefit to you. Reach out to these guys and, and uh, get something, uh, some hardware in your hands so you can play around with it. It's a, a lot of fun. So anyway, uh, it can mean a lot to a big business as well. So if you're in the IT department of a large corporation or a small business, home office business or whatever the case may be, call these guys. Uh, they can help you out. They're at 585-672-5481. Uh, Again, thanks to TruePath Technologies. Really appreciate the support.